All right, this is a long section, but this is one of the shorter videos in the section. We're going to talk about differentiability. If you've got a function f of x, we say it's differentiable at a number a if the derivative exists there. And um, we say that f of x is differentiable on an interval, an open interval from a to b, if it's differentiable everywhere inside of that interval. So there are three reasons that a function might not be differentiable at a. And we've already seen one of those. One is, um, one is if it's discontinuous at a. If you've got a function and it's got an, it's got an asymptote, vertical asymptote, then the derivative is not defined there. It's also not defined if you have a jump in the graph or if you have a, a missing hole in the graph like this. So if it's not continuous at a, the derivative doesn't exist. The second one, we saw this one in a few earlier examples, is if you have a sharp corner, also known as a cusp, the reason for that is the derivative um, jumps as you, as you go from one place to the next. The slope makes an abrupt change there. It doesn't smoothly go from positive to negative. It jumps immediately from some big positive value to some negative value. It doesn't smoothly go there through zero. And the other thing is if it has a vertical tangent. And vertical tangents, those can happen if you have a graph that looks like something like that. You can have a vertical tangent there in the middle. So um, let's look at this example. It says, uh, look at the graph of uh, the cube root of x to determine where it's not differentiable. So if we look at cube root of x, now, Desmos, I don't think, will let you type in cube root. There's a way you can force it to put a cube root, but it doesn't really work. But if you put in uh, x raised to the 1 third power, that gives you the cube root. And you can see right there at 0. Um, at x equals 0, you've got a, horizontal, or a vertical tangent there. So the derivative is not defined there. Um, another example we saw in the previous video is if you have a graph with um, with a sharp corner, like y equals absolute value of x, the derivative is not defined at at zero because you have that sharp corner. All right. The other thing I want to talk about on this video is notation. Um, so far, we've been using the prime notation for x, or for the derivative, but there are several ways we could do this. So suppose you've got y equals f of x. You could use the prime notation and refer to the derivative either as f prime or as uh, y prime. We've also got this down here called the Leibniz notation, where it's dy over dx and df over dx. And those are useful because... Um, in the prime notation, it doesn't really tell you much about the variables. With the Leibniz notation, it tells you the variable that you're taking with respect to. Derivative with respect to x. Sometimes our derivative might be something different. Like we've, we've used t for some time problems, and sometimes uh, you might have other things. Like, um, you know, examples I've got down here, like, you know, R and T. So Leibniz notation is nice because on things like this, you can sort of specify we're taking the derivative of this function and the variable we're taking the derivative with respect to is R. Uh, another thing is the differential operator. Now, these first two are fairly common. Now, when it says operator, what that means is we're taking the derivative of y, or we're taking the derivative of f. Now these other two notations, we're not really going to use those at all in, in our class, but you should be aware of them, especially if you eventually take differential equations. Those will pop up again then, but I don't think you'll see them again in this class or in Calc 2. Or Calc, uh, you'll, you might see them in Calc 3, but anyway. 
The nice thing about the differential operator is that you can um, use it like this. Um, this example here, all, all four, all three of these examples are things we can do because they're linear functions, so we can do them very quickly. The derivative of 3x plus 4 is 3. The derivative, because this is just a linear function. Same thing going on down here, 2 pi r. That's just taking r and multiplying it by a constant of 2 pi. So that's a linear function, too. So the derivative of this with respect to r is 2 pi. And the derivative of this with respect to uh, t would be negative 3 sevenths. The Leibniz notation is, is useful when you're... Um, it's very nice if you've got variables that are you know, unusual, or if you want to be very explicit about what you're taking the derivative with respect to. Uh, Leibniz, just uh, to go on a historical uh, tangent, Leibniz was a German guy who discovered calculus. Uh, Newton discovered calculus, and so did Leibniz. They actually, they had a big fight about it, and there's some uh, information in the textbook about it. But basically what happened was Newton discovered it first. Leibniz discovered it later, and Leibniz published it, and Newton had not published it yet. So Newton got all angry about, um, about Leibniz, saying he was like stealing his stuff. There was no theft going on. It's just, it's just um, Leibniz published it, and Newton hadn't published it yet. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it for this video.